My name is John Tran. I'm the Chief Sales Officer here at Profi. My role is leading the Profi sales team to meet revenue and sales growth targets, overseeing all sales related activities, including assessing, implementing strategies, and guiding and aligning the product marketing and sales team. I'm really excited about my role because each day I get to meet customers who do incredible work to nurture and unlock potential in others, and we're able to offer a solution that helps unlock even more potentials for our Profis. I'm a second generation Vietnamese American. My family came to this country leaving everything behind in search of more more opportunities for my brother and sister. I'm the youngest of five and the only one to have been born in America. I had to work pretty hard to put myself through school, I'm working full time while studying computer science at UCLA. I found that I really thrived at the intersection of technology and business. I'm very proud of building teams and processes that have evolved from an entry level business development team to a number one lead source for revenue for the company. And that team evolved into a proving ground where there were more people promoted from our team to other parts of the company than any other part of the organization. I was heavily invested in finding a company that provided me with two things. One, the opportunity to plant roots and grow my career and experience. And two, that I had a voice and that my voice had impact. As long as I have those two things and my team has those two things, we can make a significant, strong sales operation. Mutual friends put me in touch with Alina, our CEO, and uh, one great conversation led to another as I learned more and more about Profi's vision and how they were helping the scale and maximize their impact. With all the social injustice and the great resignation happening, the idea of helping people do more good in the world really resonated with me. Reading the reviews and hearing firsthand from Profi's clients about their stories on how they overcame anxiety, stress, and struggle from all the fragmented tools that they were using before and they solved with the Profi platform, hearing the joy in their voice combined with working with incredibly smart and talented and fun people, that just sealed the deal for me. Awesome. That's the kind of theme across the board of everybody that I talk to is the mission. It's the mission that matters. Ultimately, I think it starts with believing in the value that you're providing. Either you need to improve your product or solution that you're providing value or that you need to join a company that provides a product or solution that you really believe in. Building a culture of success throughout the team. You have to be invested in your team and the people. We work to live. We don't live to work. So understanding their goals and helping to align not just to job performance and quotas, but actually to their career and life goals as well. I think it really boils down to helping clients make educated decisions about how to manage and grow their business and improve their quality of life. You know, it's a balance of art and science. You're listening to their wants and needs and having the solution that can help them overcome their challenges. Anyone can learn how to sell. We all do a little bit of selling or positioning in our everyday lives. However, there, there are certain traits that are innate or that some people learned earlier in life than others, but we can all learn and put them into practice. Empathy, effective communication, internal motivation, situational fluency, knowing how to read the room, that takes practice. I was coming from a computer science background. I was horrible at my first direct sales job. After a couple of weeks, I went to my head of sales and asked him who was the best at getting meetings. And so I went to that guy and offered him my first five meetings if he let me shadow his prospecting calls and sessions. After shadowing him pretty soon, I was getting the most meetings in the office, but I had struggled to close any of the deals. So I went back to my head of sales and asked who was the best. I went to that rep and offered my first five commissions. In hindsight, I probably should have offered only two. After shadowing him and learning, I became the top producer in the office and new reps were starting to make me the same offers. Everybody can benefit from a really good coach. The first one that comes to mind for any good salesperson is having empathy, asking the right questions and listening. I think that's a very key part of any sales process to understand where your client is coming from and what their challenges they're trying to overcome. Are. Second thing is having a very clearly defined sales process. You want to identify who your ideal customer profile is so that you can create messaging that aligns to the outcomes that you're trying to help them achieve. That'll drive your product development. That'll drive your marketing messaging. The next thing is capturing the right metrics. If it's the number of calls, emails, meetings, the qualification, discovery, contract negotiations, closing, you want to make sure that you are measuring the right milestones. It's okay to make mistakes and prefer to make them fast as long as you learn from them. The worst thing you can do is not make a decision. It's not enough to be successful. You have to understand why you've been successful so you can create a successful repeatable process at scale. Using data to identify which levers to pull and how hard to pull. And you want to have a big enough sample to make those decisions. Part of that is being open to that reflection and looking back at what your defined process is, what your metrics are, and how you're analyzing those results. Being open to creative strategies to try to iterate and improve those results. Just because you've been having success one way for so long doesn't mean you're going to be successful for the next 5, 10, 20 years. Because there's so much change happening in the world, you have to adapt to current markets. You want to lay out the sales process to understand what data points you need to capture and how the market is responding to your messaging, how your customers are responding to your value proposition, what the competitive landscape looks like. So you always want to keep your finger on the pulse and take time to reflect on what's happening around you, as well as having those deep dive conversations with your customers and your prospects 
to make sure that you're still providing a value add to their need. I would say consistency is key. You have to identify what's urgent versus important. Everything's important, but what are the urgent key items that need to get knocked out first that will have downstream effects for making that decision or that action happen right then and there. A big part of prioritization is sitting back and identifying what the main goal you're trying to achieve is, what the outcome that you're trying to achieve from this meeting, from this next interaction with a client. The third thing I would say is going into any future partnership with the mindset of abundance. So identifying what that win-win scenario is. You don't have to win the deal at the expense of others because there's always plenty of room for everyone to succeed. A big part of that is going into the conversation with empathy and active listening. You want to be genuinely interested in what your prospect or your client is telling you so that you understand the scenario and the challenges that they're facing. Another really successful habit is understanding the circle of influence versus your circle of control. You have to detach yourself from the outcome. You can't force a prospect or a client to take a meeting or to sign a deal. And if you do, when you attach yourself to that specific outcome and they don't come through, you're going to be really hard on yourself. You're going to beat yourself up. That kind of leads into my last successful habit, making the time to take care of yourself physically with nutrition, exercise, sleep, spiritually, identifying your core values, some mindful meditation and your mindset. You always want to be learning something new or emotionally filling your bucket personally and professionally by chatting and connecting with friends and family. Or if anybody's read the books, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People from Stephen Covey, I borrowed a lot from him, but this rang true throughout all my life. What I've seen a lot is our reps that have initial success and they're so busy closing deals that they don't put in time and effort to continue to build pipeline, to build the top of the funnel, to fulfill them after they close their initial deals. They take their foot off the gas a little bit. Having that consistent process, good metrics, and being able to iterate is very key. Shifting your mindset from winning the deal for yourself to creating the win-win scenario will change your mindset and how you approach conversations and how you approach the deal. This isn't the one and only deal that's out there that you have to do everything to scrape and claw your way to win this one deal. I'd rather focus my time and effort in finding the right buyer for my product and solution at my price point at the market than trying to convince this one person who is dead set on paying $10 for a BMW. Going back to time management, it's understanding that qualifying a deal out is just as important, if not more important as qualifying a deal in. You want to make sure that you're applying your time and effort to the folks who are going to be responsive to your message and who truly see the value of your solution. Really amazing sales reps do a great job of asking even more questions to truly understand the customers and where they're coming from. They don't try to force a product or service onto anyone. It leads to poor client satisfaction and bigger problems down the line when you go through implementations and you get poor reviews down the line. So no one wants to be in that position. Amazing reps focus on doing the right things to the best of your ability. You can't control the outcome if a prospect decides to buy or not, but you can control your attitude and your effort. You can control your knowledge and the amount of practice you put into your delivery and your expertise. What this past year has reminded me to do is to live in the moment. With all the change that's been happening, I'm setting the intention to take the time to be more present. Instead of worrying about things that are out of my control, focus on what I can control, which is my attitude and effort and how I react to things. And I think that's a pretty good mindset to have going into the new year. 